Good evening, everyone. Welcome to episode six of Courtside Hoop Talk. I'm your host, Josiah V, and with me. And this is Alika. Happy to see you guys here. All right, so for tonight, we're privileged to have another guest. This guy played nine years in the PBA, also played a couple years in the ABL. He was born and raised in the Bay Area in California. That's welcome, Mr. Josh Orbistondo. insights and, and uh, my story yeah. thanks man so for this uh, this year 2017 2018 you're actually gonna play again in the same basketball league this time as part of all of Filipinas yeah yeah so how's how's training been I know your season will start in a, in a few days oh training's been good training's been uh, fun um, you know we we have a, a great group of guys uh, coach Jimmy Alan mm-hmm. Pog's doing a great job with us um, in preparation. So we start on Sunday against the defending champions, uh, Hong Kong. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I'm excited. Uh, I'm excited to be representing our country. And um, yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be a good one. Hopefully we can get a championship this year. Sounds good. So how's the team uh, morale coming in? This, uh, I heard just came from a team, team building activity. <laughs> yeah, we did some team building uh, together. Uh, here in Manila um, and uh, that's just to really get to know each other more there's a lot we have a lot of new faces on the team and and we need to just uh, it's important to you know gain uh, camaraderie and, and chemistry off the court because it translate onto the court and it, it was definitely a good uh, bonding and uh, uh, we keep growing every day together as a, as a family hopefully can transfer on the court on Sunday. Sounds good. I will talk more about Alab later. Let's right. dial back a bit and uh, would like to know more about your background. Uh, so tell us, where were you born and raised? Where did you play high school ball and eventually college? <clears throat> I was um, born and raised in San Francisco, California, Bay Area. Yeah. Um, went to high school in uh, Sarah, Sarah High School mm-hmm. and, and, and I was a transfer to Hillsdale. Sarah actually has um, some some alumni that played with uh, Barry Bonds went there. Tommy Brady, some good, oh. yeah, some some big time uh, sport. It's a sports school. Transferred to Hillsdale High School, graduated from there, and then went on to play um, junior college. Uh, junior college, yeah, junior college at uh, Foothill, Foothill College for two years, and then I got a full ride scholarship to an NAI uh, Division One school. It's called the Golden State Athletic Conference uh, mm-hmm. in Fresno Pacific. So how was um, coming in your senior year at Hillsdale? Uh, I'm sure you were. Uh, I think you won the championship that year. Um, no, yeah. Well, we um, we made it deep in the playoffs. But, uh, yeah. I'm sure you were recruited by a few schools. I'm not sure, maybe in Division Two or NAIA, maybe in Division One. What made you decide to do the junior college route first? Um, that's a good question. Um, you know, in in the U.S. I, I believe you know junior college is a great stepping stone not o- not only on the court but off the court uh, mm. I don't think I was ready to move away from uh, my family yet at that time I you know I was 17 um, oh, to, yeah I was 17 yet oh, um, yeah so I, I didn't really know what I wanted to do as far as pursue my career and, and my major and then as well as you know uh, I had some some offers at, at some four-year universities but um, I wanted to go the route of staying close to home, but at the same time, you know, just just it, just growing as an individual off the court and mm-hmm. and on the court. And I had because uh, some people can just go to a four year right away at a young age and red shirt or uh, not 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 getting many minutes, and it's not really good for your confidence, and you don't grow as a player. Right. So uh, I, I I did really well. I. I Receive all conference honors, both my uh, my freshman, and my sophomore year, my junior college. Mm-hmm. Um, led our conference in scoring oh. and yeah, second in assists. So 
I was I was getting starting to get looks my sophomore year, and of course, ideally, you want to you want to help your parents out by by getting a scholarship. Right. And in the states, some schools offer uh, partial scholarships, full rides, and mm-hmm. and I really wanted you know there's nothing better to get than getting a free degree. Exactly. So I was blessed to have the opportunity to get a full ride scholarship to Fresno, which is a very very uh, competitive school. I actually played against. Uh, in my conference, I uh, saw Mercado. Biola. Uh, yeah, Biola. We played against each other. Um, and it, it's a very competitive league and went on, got a scholarship and and got some all-conference all honors there. Right. And, yeah, and so after I graduated, that's when I was trying to pursue my career in the Philippines. So how did that uh, whole opportunity open up with you going here in the Philippines? Did you know anyone or maybe in the Philam League? Um, yeah, I played in Philam Leagues um, and it's interesting because Baliktad, uh, yung father ko, siya yung Pinoy, Filipino. Uh, yeah. So yung surname ko, yung last name is Filipino or Pistado. So some agents uh, or some not agents, some some basketball fans here that you know were recruiting actually for La Salle. Oh, okay. Yeah, they were <laughs> recruiting me to go to La Salle, okay. but um, I. I was still in college, and I, I, I was on scholarship there, and I, I was already uh, tied up. Mm-hmm. And I said, well, maybe after I graduate. So I kept in contact with some people. And uh, before you know it, after I graduated, I, I had an airplane flight to, to the Philippines. Oh, right away. Yeah, yeah. I had a, a flight over here to, to, to just try out. And at, that, at that time, it was the PBL. Right, right. right. And... Um, that's where it started. And what was the name of your first PBL team? Were Granny Goose or? No, uh, first was Kettle Corn UST. Okay. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Kettle Corn UST. Um, they were just fresh off a championship. It was just for one conference. And then I went on and played for Coach Lawrence Chongson mm-hmm. uh, okay. at uh, Burger King. All right. Yeah, Burger King. So that's where it started. From there, I heard you had a stint with the Philippine team. Not a lot of people know about that. Oh yeah, not a lot of people know. I was playing with um, uh, Sea Games, uh, uh, Philippine team, in 2006-2007, playing some preliminary tournaments, and um, um, I actually was uh, in the roster, Mm -hmm. but uh, some things happened with my Philippine passport at the time. Um, I was still getting that. process because it was new in my career I just arrived so um, I, I started the process of my Philippine passport when I arrived not before I arrived otherwise but right. anyways that happened um, didn't get to play the actual you know see games but I was uh, I was competing internationally at that time with you know Jason Castro Bo Belga Gabe Norwood that's when Norwood came in and yeah, so it was a great experience for me, especially early in my career. And after that, I think before you played in the PBL again with Farex, yeah, I think you went back to the U.S. And yeah, well, I went back to the U.S., um, had some family things to deal with, and then um, uh, my passport came in, uh, and I had an opportunity to play with Farex. My, uh, my relatives actually... Are part of the organization, and they okay. they were talking to me and, and saying they would love me to play, and that's when I met uh, Chris Ross, um, and yeah, then we played together, made the finals, lost in the finals, and then oh, and then that. went on for the draft, PBA draft. Yeah, yeah I want to focus on that time you spent in the U.S. I believe you played in some Bay Area based pro am leagues. Yeah, I played pro am. Yeah, yeah. So when I when I went home, I played pro am. I actually, um, I played for Bay Pride. My teammates were like Wendell McInnes uh-huh. that played here, yeah, yeah, yeah. Orlando Johnson, Johnson, Aaron Gordon. Wow. Um, yeah, and at that time, well, at that time he was young. He was still in high school, and believe it or not, his he had an older brother that was more hype than him in high school. He just didn't uh, go the same route. It's a uh, college is huge there, depending on how it can, you know, uh, uh, build the foundation of your career, and so it just Aaron Gordon got um, eventually, of course, 
how successful he is now, got the better end of it. But um, I, his brother played, his older brother played with us, and uh, we had a good team. But it, it was a great experience because it brings back, you know, the, that's where the legends played. Jason Kidd, which is my favorite player of all time, he played there. Gary Payton, a lot of the Golden State Warriors. There's a NBA legends that actually played there. So it was, it was definitely an honor and a blessing to be able to play alongside those guys' names. I heard you had some good names there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Good games. And, uh, yeah, you were, uh, I'm sure that really toughened you up. Yeah. On your, when you get, came back here and played for, for Farrex. Yeah, of course it builds confidence yeah. playing against NBA guys. And, and, for sure. And especially if you're playing well against them, then, like, okay, um, like play anywhere, right? So, it was good. It's just a different brand of basketball here, though, in the Philippines. A lot of great players still here, so. Good. And I'm sure in that three year span after you graduated college and before you applied for the draft in 2009, it was a roller coaster ride for you with a lot of learnings, I'm sure. Yeah. I would just summarize that whole three year experience. From? After you graduated college, I uh -huh. think 2006, yeah, 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 before yeah. you applied for the draft in 2009. Yeah. Played well, for, yeah. Um, yeah, well, it, it, actually been, it actually helped me because I got to know uh, the basketball, how it worked, and how, how Philippine basketball was. And um, to adapt to it, uh, I just had some also some personal things that I had to do in the states that when I uh, my first year after graduating. So actually, after I took care of all of that, uh, I actually I was adapted to yeah you know, how Philippine basketball worked. And so coming back the second time was really um, this is it. Mm -hmm. You know, I uh, I just prayed that everything's gonna you know just go well. And that's it up to God. And, and, and fortunately, I, um, I had a great career out of it in the PBA. Yeah. And uh, let's talk about that. Applied for the draft in 2009, went undrafted, but still made a team that same year with Santa Lucia. Tell us how that whole process went. Um, yeah, I, just, I was undrafted. Uh, it was surprising because uh, Chris, me and, like I said, Chris, uh, he was the best man at my wedding. Mm -hmm. We were very close. We went to uh, play the Forex together. And, and the draft camp, I was actually, I'm going to take this wrong way, but, uh, I was one of the top performers in the camp. Uh, and we were, uh, Chris was surprised. A lot of the draftees were surprised. And, and at that time, there was only two rounds. To, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, speak, right? but I really didn't talk to many teams. I was just there to play. I didn't have. I wasn't really uh, represented by uh, anyone at that time. I had. I had some friends oh, help. Okay. Yeah, I had some friends helping out, um, and so it was. It was. Um, I didn't really uh, discuss many things so I was just playing and playing and hoping for the best but at that time everybody really maybe for that draft had like I said there was only 12 20 players 19 were picked one one was passed yeah. so I, I'm pretty sure teams had their minds set up and um, you know you can't you can't get down after that you can't get down you, 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 you of course it's just naturally you, you know in instinct to feel down but right, I just right. used that as a chip on my shoulder as motivation but in a positive way That's right. in a very positive way so to motivate me to just prove that I'm not going to give up I'm going to talk to some teams I'm going to ask to to go and try out and and so maybe they, they didn't see me enough mm -hmm. maybe it wasn't I didn't do enough mm -hmm. so I wanted to prove to them that I can play I, I can I can I can play at a high level and and perform as one of the premier guards in the in the PBA. From there, yeah, you went on to have a pretty solid first year with Santa Lucia. Actually, made all rookie team. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I think you had a lot of fun there with, yeah. uh, with Kelly Williams and Ryan. Ray yeah, so. Kelly Ryan. They took me under their wing, and, and uh, Boss Buddy and, and Coach Boyett. They really were um, believed in me. Uh, they signed me for two years and, and gave me the opportunity to play, and, and it just went went from there. Yeah. Um, yeah. From there, uh, 
went on and played with Air 21 after a couple of years with Santa Lucia. I think that was with Danny Siegel, yeah. Don Don Antivera, Spaniards. Yeah, 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 Spaniards. Yeah. And I uh, also, also had an interesting time there, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, I actually got a lot of exposure there, too. Um, mm -hmm. I had my career high there uh, against San Miguel. I remember, and we beat them. Uh, and I, I was playing at a high level there um, at Air 21. We were one of the bottom teams, but I, I took it as a, as a, you know, just an opportunity to show the league that, you know, I can play. And I, of course, I, I, I always had the chip on my shoulder. I, I approach every game as it's my last, mm -hmm. uh, no matter how good I'm playing or, or if some something goes wrong. You know, I, I, I don't. I always handle adversity in, in, in a positive way and, and try to improve and get better every day, every day. And I think that's that's what helped me out a lot. And I had some great veterans and some great guys to learn from in, in early in my career, in Danny Siegel and, and, and Don Don. And I'm actually with them right now. Right. It's funny how things basketball, come right. things, things like come the first circle. And, 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 <laughs> and, yeah, so hopefully we can win a championship together this time around. There, you went to BMEG where you won the championship. Yeah, yeah. PBA. Uh, very, just very interesting um, story there. How uh, you fought uh, neck and neck with Talking Text, and uh, yeah, went to a game seven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's a balls. We went to that was a pro the most special moment of, of my career. You know, we I was able to uh, battle against my co head coach now. Which is uh, Jimmy Halepot. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, and um, um, just to you know play against you know one of the top point guards that's ever played the game, and then uh, also Jason Castro. A young Jason Castro. Yeah, young Jason Castro, and and to be able to win that championship uh, was just amazing. Uh, something that you know that's what we play for, mm -hmm. and um, uh, it's definitely a. a lifelong memory and uh, I'm gonna cherish that moment forever but uh, yeah yeah that, it was great to get to get that like every player would love to get yeah I'd like to talk about Denzel Bowles a bit I mean he really had a dominant conference of course sealed that championship with those free throws uh, would you say he's one of the most dominant, if not the most dominant imports you played with? Yeah yeah ever? I mean uh, yeah definitely you played with a lot yeah I played with a lot of imports and uh, yeah he's just amazing for him that's what you dream of that's yeah. what you dream of growing yeah. up as a kid yeah. in your backyard or <laughs> playing you're just like okay no time on the clock game seven oh. uh, down by two you know yeah so he knocked both of them down just to, to have that uh, to have that composure and, and and mental toughness especially at a young age yeah. that was his first gig out of college he was only about 21 I believe so um, uh, he's he's definitely one of the top that I played with, and uh, he's he's had he's having such an amazing career overseas. So we still keep in touch time to time. I always keep in touch with my my former teammates. Mm -hmm. From there, went on to play in Morocco, then in Nebra. Had a stint with the Slingers just la last year. Yeah, last year, last year. What was that? Playing with uh, it, was, it, it was good. Two imports, then the rest. So yeah, 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 yeah. It was good, actually. Um, different. I had to change my mindset because I'm playing actually as an import there, so <laughs> they right. they demand a lot from you. You play pretty much the whole game, and then uh, you have and very the only heritage import. Yeah, right? I was the only heritage import, so uh, you have very small room for error. Yeah. Uh, you really have to. They depend on you to carry a team, or, or otherwise, you're. That's the reason why you're there. Mm -hmm. um, they believe in you that you can. Uh, play at a much higher level than their local players. Uh, it was a great experience, different, uh, tough because I was away from my family mm -hmm. and my kids, uh, my wife. So um, it was tough, but they came, came and visited me, and, and I, it, it was, I was blessed because I had, I had all the Filipinos behind my. Of course, they were supporting Ala, but they were also supporting me as well. Yeah, uh, which which was which was amazing. So um, great stint. We lost in the finals. Every any game could have went either way, right. but it was a great experience. I'm glad that I have that year, 
no, it wasn't about a year, about three months uh, under under my my belt of experience. So hopefully that'll help me this year, and maybe I'll uh, helping you know Allah win this championship. How was it though assimilating with a different culture, different team? Of course, I mean, aside from the two imports, the rest are all Singaporeans. Yeah. So was that did that pose as a challenge for you? I mean, I don't know at the end of the day it's basketball, but yeah. A challenge as Just really assimilating the team, um, yeah. chemistry. Yeah, I mean the, the those guys were. I mean those, those guys are all great guys, very young, and, and, and they they all welcomed me very well. So um, uh, they they actually looked up to me playing, yeah, playing because I'm, I'm I'm older than them and playing in the PPA for for the amount of time that I did and the experience that I went through. Um, so they were they were very welcoming to me. And really, uh, you know, relied on me to help them be successful last year. Uh, uh, but I'm so glad that I uh, we we beat the Alab yeah, last yeah, year in the semis. But I'm so glad to be able to play for the Philippines mm -hmm. and represent our country. Not many people can say that they're able to represent their country. You know, of right, course, other right. than the Gilas, the, our national team right now, but. That's always been actually my dream to represent my country and 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 just you know have all, all the Philippines you know uh, and not only the Philippines but every Filipino in the world just behind our back right, as well. right, right, so right. you know it's different than playing in the PBA definitely where you have each club and organizations mm -hmm. here Kaitsino they're gonna be supporting Kaitsino Kaitsano oh Eva. <laughs> And from there, had a short stint with Global again, mm -hmm. and now you're you're with Allah. Yeah, so went back to, to Global, and then uh, just we parted ways, and uh, and then talked to Coach Jimmy, and he really want he really believed in me, and as we played against each other for so many years, and right, right. Uh, really we 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 definitely uh, had some great talks about this coming year and, and I'm, I'm definitely happy to be on board. Actually I like the composition of uh, all up slide. Now. We've got a good mix of uh, veteran players, young guys like uh, Domingo and Parks and you got two veteran imports. Yeah. How, how, how's everything been? How's the chemistry been like? Uh, of course we all know uh, Ivan Johnson has some pretty colorful history especially mm -hmm. in the PBA mm -hmm. and Reggio Cosa he played. I, I'm not sure if you were with Baracko at the time. No, that I was not Barack. I didn't know. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, had a forgettable game. I know. I asked him. I said, "Have you been here before?" He goes, "I don't know how to answer that." <laughs> he goes, "Yes and no," because yeah, I didn't even know he actually we played here. Yeah. He played for one game, ten minutes. He said they won, and Barack yeah. will release him. Anyway. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. yeah uh, we have a great group of guys, a great mixture of guys. Like you said, we have young guys, we have some veterans. Uh, good mesh, you need that to, in order to win a championship. And, um, and, and yeah, it's, it, uh, it's been going well so far. Mm -hmm. I thought for a while then that Danny Siegel was going to play. Yeah. <laughs> there were some talks. <laughs> Yeah, we in social media that he was gonna, that he was gonna play. Yeah. Um, so he's he's acting as you know a team consultant, team consultant, yeah, coach. So he's helping Coach Jimmy out and, and Coach uh, Coach Mac. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. how has uh, Coach Jimmy been? Uh, has you know, how's, how's he been managing the team? Oh, he's been uh, he's been he's been great. Uh, you know, uh, he's. He played, you know, how many years in the BBA? You know, fourteen, I believe, fourteen plus. And, and with with his work ethic and how he did as a player, and, and, and how he approached the game, and what he brought to the game, he's just uh, he's just uh, one of the best players that ever played in the BBA. And it's his first first gig as a head coach. But he's been blessed to have, you know, Coach Charles Reyes um, was was co he was coaching with him for the national team. He was under Coach Norman Black from Morocco, and, and to be under those those coaches uh, early in your coaching career, and now now him running the team, it, it, he's just approaching it the same way that he did when he was a player, and, and that's 
the the dedication, the commitment, the love of the game, the preparation, everything he has to do, he, he's doing, yeah. and he's and he's making sure we're we're all all his players, we're all on board, and we're all uh, staying together, and, and making sure we're all on the same page. And yeah. uh, he's doing a great job, great job so far, right. and, uh, and hopefully we can we can get uh, a, our first win for him. You know, as 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 his first time as a head coach, to get his first W on, on Sunday, and that'll be very special, and, and hopefully we can do that for him. Hope so. Just hearing that from you, and maybe just uh, keeping track of Jimmy on the public career is really just synonymous to leadership mm-hmm. and respect, and even like uh, guys like Ali, and even you know the players in Iran, they they just have the the utmost respect for him. Yeah. Well, wherever he plays, yes. whether locally in the PBA or in FIBA, yeah. I think he holds a position in the FIBA board. If I'm not mistaken. So, yeah. Well, you said it right. We all do have the utmost respect for him. And Ivan didn't play with him. That was the time where Jimmy was the yeah consultant manager for Talking Text. But it just shows you, you know, how he impacts people. And, and Ivan has that most respect for him, even though he didn't play with him. Yeah, but they won the championship right, together, right. and uh, we all we are on the same page. That we all have the same respect we do for uh, for Coach Jimmy, and, and that's why we're gonna, we're going to be fighting every day and uh, trying to get Alex a first first championship. Yeah. All the best, man. We'll be definitely keeping track of the team, and uh, yeah. Thank you, thank You're you, thank for you. you guys. Yeah, yeah, thank you. I mean, we just have been having so much support with the Philippines okay. and, and you know, Boss uh, Don Don Monteverde uh, with Virtual Playground and Boss Charlie, uh, Charlie B and right. with uh, SM and and, and you know Tan uh, you know, helping us out big time and and uh, supporting us. So we we have that support. So so you know, it's just a blessing that we have to give back and 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 nothing's better than to reward. Uh, everyone who's supporting us with it with the championship uh, yeah, this this yeah. coming ABL eight season eight. Yeah, actually, actually, yeah, I'm going to ask you a question. Actually, one of your fans wanted me to ask you, Josh. Okay. How do you stay motivated after the losing game? Uh, how do I stay motivated? Yeah, after losing a game. Yeah. Huh? Uh, good question. Thank you. Whatever fan that is. <laughs> uh, I, t- after losing a game, uh, it's. <clears throat> that's part of playing basketball. You know, there has to be there's a winner and then there's a loser. Um, you know, you can't get too down. That you can't. I was always told that uh, you can't get too high after a win, and you can't get too down after a loss. You have to have that ground, that, that even keel, and and you just ha- you just use it as motivation on. How I'm my, my biggest critic on how I can improve and how no and no no championship team uh, out there has not gone through adversity and it's how you handle adversity and I that's that's when when you lose a game I believe that's when your team should become closer not right. separate yeah you know uh, after a loss when you become closer as a team that's when you know you you overcome adversity go overcome the struggles and able to reach your goals better to win a championship so you can't get too low after a loss you had that's when you have to get back to the drawing board watch a film I I, I I I take really really a lot of pride in my craft I watch a lot of video on how I can improve individually how we can improve as a team I'm very vocal so I love I love to talk to my teammates talk to my players and and and, and just see how we can do to to bounce back and get a win. Mm-hmm. That's nice. Yeah, nice of you. Nice yeah. of you, actually. That's the nickname, the fireman. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, so we're coming to our next segment. This is where everyone loves. Uh, no holds barred. We'll be asking I'm, you. I'm nervous. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be asking you several random questions. Some came from social media. Some came from the forums, and others, Ali and I. Created. So are you ready for this? I'm ready. Yeah. All right. Let's Hopefully. Let's do this. Best player you went up against in the Pro-Am League? 
Best player I went against. Maybe, maybe even played with. Um, at that time, I would say Gilbert Arenas, because at that oh, time, played with him. Yeah, yeah. He, he, at that time, that's when he was, you know, about to leave the Warriors, and before his Wizards stint, and he was reaching towards his prime of his career. So he was ridiculous playing against. I mean right past half court pull up yeah, how, how explosive and athletic he was because he doesn't really it's deceiving how explosive he is but he's one of the most explosive players I've played against just seeing uh, playing above the rim at that time no chill game. Yeah. best player you went up against in the PBA can be can be an import you want to say best player I've played against that's tough yeah that's you only tough. have to pick one so yeah uh, I'll say um, Coach Jimmy Alipod. Okay, all right. Yeah. Great, great pick, obviously. Um, granted that you're from the Bay Area, who would you say is the best Filipino to come out of that, uh, to come out of the Bay Area? The best Filipino player from the Bay Area. There are a lot actually. Some are even um, playing in the D League. Yeah, I, uh, I'm not familiar. If you want to say yourself, then. Yes. I mean, I, of course, I would. I would always say myself. Yeah. I mean, you can never can <laughs> say yourself no. short. <laughs> you know, uh, you got to have that confidence in order to be the best player that you can be. There you go. So there I'll just go. say myself. Mm -hmm. That's good. All right. Yeah, I'll just say myself. But there are some great, great players that came out yeah, in yeah. Harvey. Yeah. Harvey Carey actually, I think, um, set uh, the, the the foundation for all of us because you know he's he's one of the the best um, players to you know to, what, yeah, yeah to come out one of the yeah. best products that came out of the Bay Area played came in with the draft of Jimmy so yeah. I, I'm saying four, when you play 14, 15 years in the league. That says it all right there. We have Simon and Ciso, you know, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Marcio Lasseter. We've got a lot of uh, uh, Bay Area products. So this Philam playing in the D League of Mick McKinney. Not sure if you've heard of him. Really? Yeah, he's Filipino American. Okay. Played in NBA D League. I think he plays in Europe now. Oh, all right. Yeah. I'm not familiar with too familiar with the younger guys. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. Question from actually Bay Area native, uh, Will Tombo. What do you love most? And what do you love the least? What do you like the least about being a professional basketball player? Um, the most is doing what you love to do and getting paid for it, supporting yeah. our family. And I, I just, I, I got to meet, you know, playing pro ball, you could just say, oh, I love the pro ball or the, the individual accolades of winning awards or, um, of course, even winning championships is, is the most, that's what we play for. Yeah. But me as, uh, just how I was raised by my parents, it, it, it's really the, the relationships that I've built through my nine year career in the PBA. And I've just met some amazing, incredible coaches, uh, players, through all the teams that I've been with, and the relationships that I've built um, that we, that I, that the people that have impacted me and, and, and making me the person that I am now, it's just, it's just uh, uh, speaks beyond measure. So um, that's one, that's the best thing I, I love about being a professional basketball player. The least is uh, maybe all the, all the, I can't even say the, the critics or, or, or the people talk because I use that as motivation. That, that makes me the person I am now as well. So. Just maybe the people that don't really understand uh, what we do in, in, in our craft and, and the ones that talk about it the most but don't understand the, yeah. ga the game or they, all they see is the, what they see on TV, but they don't really know the, they've never, they're not into sports or, <laughs> and then they start talking yeah. upon it. Yeah. That might, that could be frustrating as a player because <laughs> uh, um, at least do your research or know, know where you are, where, know where a professional basketball player is coming from before you can speak negatively. I hear you. 
Who is your favorite tennis player, by the way? Tennis? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, we know you played some tennis back yeah. in high school, so uh, yeah, just save this question for you. <laughs> you guys did some, did some serious research. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys are good. Yeah, I did actually play tennis, um, and I'm a lefty. Oh yeah, I'm a lefty. So one of my favorite players is Pete Sampras. Oh yeah, oh, there you go. Yeah, Pete yeah. Sampras, so. all timer. Yeah, yeah. That was back in the '90s. So yeah, our yeah, our year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, which combo was better, Kagiwa or Helterbrand? Although you played with him the latter part of their career, yeah, or Pringle Romeo. Uh, that's interesting. Played with both. You know, yeah, yeah. Um, sorry, guys. Pringle and Romeo, you guys are, are, are a great combo and um, very talented. But I have to go with Mark and JJ. Where's uh, that? I mean, they have four championships. I mean, that was in an ever, old and ever days. They just won two more, so I yeah, believe yeah. they have six yeah, each. Yeah, I think. Yeah. So it, it's hard. It's hard to say Terrence and Stanley when when they're still early in the in their career and 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 also with how many championships. Uh, you 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 always have to go by. Championships, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, and, and how you won and being a winner, mm -hmm. and not saying that Stanley and, and Terrence aren't winners. They, they 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 will have more opportunities. But like I said, they're young in their career. Mark and JJ have played way more years. They have so many more years under their belt in the PBA. But uh, I would have to say uh, JJ and Mark, as uh, they're they've had a, a tremendous career so far. And, and, and shout out to JJ that just announced retirement. Uh, amazing career. I was I was I was blessed to be play beside to be si play beside him and learn so much from him and and just a uh, uh, first class guy. That's good. Um, being that uh, you're from the Bay Area, I'm sure you're a huge Golden State Warriors fan. Needless to say, huge. And um, don't get it wrong. I was a fan way before we were run successful. Run CMC days? Uh, yeah, run CMC days. I was a fan um, when we were struggling to win 20 to 25 games a year. Mm -hmm. And it was a struggle. So right, right. I went through that struggle. So I have every single right to continue with my go to State Warriors. And, of course. Yeah. yeah. And uh, all you haters out there, we're going <laughs> to win another championship <laughs> this year. So how do you feel about Kevin Durant? I mean, I, I'm, uh, I love him. He's on, my, he's on our team. And when he's on your, when he's on your side, what can't you, you know, what can't you love? There's nothing not to love about him. And, and, and so I'm happy he's Even with Even with the way he's behaving in social media? Yeah, I mean, you never know the story. Yeah, there's yeah. Two, side, there's two, two sides to every story. So I'm just focusing on what he can do to help us win another championship. Let's go. That sounds good. All right. What if your 2012 BMIC team went up against the current SMB team with, of course, with Bowles and uh, SMB with probably Rhodes, second conference. Who do you think will win? I would say yes. You know? <laughs> I like I'd that. have to say like yes. Um, you know, because we all know Coach Tim and, 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 and how great he is in preparation and with, with their, his teams. And, uh, James, yeah, we we had we had a very good team. Joe Joe Devance was on our side, and, and with yeah. with Rafi Rivas, Mark Pingris, PJ Simone was in his prime. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, some 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 great players. You know. Jonas from the way, but we oh, yeah, you know, Jonas, was yeah, yeah Jonas. Sure. So that was the MVP Jonas back in the day, and, and we had Mark Barocco. We had some we we had some veterans. So you know, San Miguel's running running. I mean, they're they're doing really, making a good run right now. But, but uh, I would have to say yes, of course. Of course. Of yeah, course. Yeah, with Denzel, yeah. with Denzel on our team too. It'll be a good battle though, with Denzel and Pardo. Yeah. And maybe yeah. Rafa Rivas and Rhodes. Uh -huh. The other big guys. Yeah, yeah. that's gonna be a battle. Mm -hmm. And you and Chris Ross. Yeah. <laughs> Battling. We've had so many battles. So I'm, I'm very proud of him. You know, he's, oh, yeah. Yeah, he's uh, to become the player that he is now. And, and, doing it at this point in his and, career yeah this actually. point in his career and, and he's, he's 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 doing an amazing job with the, with that team and organization and, 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 and 
I'm, I can't be more happy than uh, and proud of, of, of what he's doing. So, uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, actually, I have a lot of questions, but did you make learn anything in this season? I mean, in this year, did you learn anything from this year you just spent? Um, with with uh, the slingers, yeah, slingers and yeah. global and global any new learnings, any um, new experience, new things. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm always learning. Mm -hmm. As a player, uh, you, you there's always room for improvement. Mm -hmm. There's never you never think that that's the best that you can be because you always continue to grow as an individual and as a player. And and I just learned a lot about you know just um, each player that you have on your team. I can even learn from a younger player. I can learn from a, a veteran, a, yeah, an older guy. So um, you know you learn adversity. Uh, Global Port, we were struggling, so I was learning how to lead. I was, I was the older guy on that team. I was trying. I was learning how to help 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 lead that team um, with with my quartet. Even even though it's T Terrence and, and Stanley show, I, I I've I've, I've, um, and they're the main players on the team. I can still help them out, as far as my experience in the league, my experiences that I went through that they haven't gone through, my championship experience that they haven't got a championship yet. But I, I hope they do, and I know they probably will. Um, in in the in the slingers, I learned a lot just on on being an import, transferring from a local to an import, my mindset that I have to be. So I learned a lot, and, and I continue learning now, especially under the staff that we have, uh, and how, how the mileage that they've went, and, and the the great experience that they've been. It's just a blessing that I get to continue to pick. I, I get to pick Coach Jimmy and Danny Siegel's brain uh, on, on on whatever um, they've experienced. So. I'm excited for this year and, and how do I can improve as a player. Oh, that's good. All right, this last few questions. This mm. is when it gets harder, all right? Oh, man. <laughs> Who would you say? <laughs> I already went through a couple Just, hard ones. Yeah, Come on. a bit. <laughs> Who would you say among the young players now in the PBA most resembles your game? Mm -hmm. The fireball. The younger guys? Yeah. Maybe those drafted five years ago until now. Who has that fireball spunk? It's interesting. I don't know. You can just say any like uh, I'm original. Nobody. All right. Okay. I'm original. Like no, I, I don't. I can't see anybody that emulates my game really. Understood. Yeah. Short shorts or long? <laughs> oh, the new trend, huh? Yeah. I'm not part of that movement yet. <laughs> <laughs> I see the Dwayne Wade, LeBron shooting around with the short shorts. Mm -hmm. We actually were talking about it on our team earlier, you know, mm -hmm. like um, no, we can't, we can't. I, can't, I can't be a part of that movement yet. So I'm, I'm still with the long, maybe length of my uh, to my knees, uh, comfortable, but I can't, I, uh, I can't see myself showing with too much of my legs. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. So about about to my knees, about to my knees, right in the middle. All right, that's the final question. What legacy would you like to leave mm -hmm. as a player when it's all said and done? Um, fitting final question. <laughs> nice. Uh, the legacy I would like to leave, you know, like and like any player would like to leave, is just is just um, um, I'll never be forgotten. You know, whether it's uh, or things that I did on the court things that I did off the court, how I carry myself as an individual and as a, as a, as a person uh, is, is big as well. Um, how you, your image, um, uh, your character, mm -hmm. and uh, I just want to be, be known and, and have a legacy of, of just uh, a first class guy, a great teammate, uh, a leader, uh, and, and, and someone that, that uh, if he hits one, He's he's gonna go ahead and hit six seven in a row yeah. within uh, within minutes. So um, just to have that killer instinct and and, 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 and that spunk and, and, and that energy, I, I want my energy to be but rubbed off on people. Even if I'm done playing the game, just oh I I want I want I want young younger players to even watch videos and not know much about the PPA maybe right now, but to grow up and be like oh I want I I, I want to emulate uh, Urbiston in the Fireballs game. 
so that, that's, that, that's, that's what's special to me. If, if I can impact any kids' lives, the new generation coming up, um, yeah, I see a lot of, um, I take pride in that and, and, and see, see happiness and, and helping out the kids and the new generations. So that's good. Thanks, man. So, yeah, that's about it. That wrap, wraps up tonight's episode. You can follow Josh on his social media channels. Yeah, follow uh, follow me on Instagram, J-U-R-B-2. Uh, also on Twitter, J-U-R-B-2. And Facebook, Joshua Bristando. Um, like my fan page, please. And can support a la Filipinas. There you go. Uh, we will be playing our first game on November 19th against Hong Kong, the defending champions. Please go out and support us at SM of Asia. If not, it's on ABS CBN Live, and uh, I'm just honored and, 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 and thankful for you guys to have me. Thank Ali, you for and, you. And, and, for you and, 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 um, and it's a pleasure, man. Yeah, thanks for having me. And hopefully, yeah. next time we can, uh, uh, when we talk, it'll be a, a, a la Filipinas champion. After the championship, yeah, after the championship. For sure. And so hopefully, we, you guys oh, can follow on. us. I you know. respect that, man. Yeah. All right, that's about it. You guys have a great evening. God bless, and we'll see you on the court side. Thank you, and don't forget to subscribe. Subscribe. <laughs> God bless, always. <laughs> <laughs>